All right, man, we're rolling. Look at you. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the what we're called the Francis Stea show. Since you're always complaining about uh not getting time to be be heard and overlooked and that kind of thing, right? Well, usually when we're in like a little panel that you put together, I'm usually like the odd man out and I you know, you you do your best to try to include me, but I just I stick out like a sore thumb. Mm-hmm. So this way we get to do the Francis Stea show. Um and you know maybe I get to shine and and stand out a little bit more. Well, you did pay us to be on the other show, so I mean you can't expect us to include you a lot as well. I, you know, I mean, hey, listen, it's the um, uh, what, what's the uh, the thing the, the thing where you pay people influencers or whatever. Uh, what's that called? That that thing endorsements. Patreon. I I did the highest level of Patreon for. Oh, the- yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the uh, that was a diamond level. Yeah, you got to be in the little, show. You know, I fly out to where you guys are, and you know, I, I I sit in, and I don't. But but this time, I paid you for my own exclusive show, where we're going to talk about the headlines in the boxing world currently. And um, you know, usually you're kind of in this seat. Jody Cone. So now I'm going to start with you. I want to get your thoughts. Okay, but can I interrupt you real quick first? You can have the whole show, but let's let people know who the hell you are. The name. Right? It's so the we name need some right background there. on you so they know why they got to care what you have to say. My name's right there. Tells you who I am. So, so when when did we meet? I mean, I know you're like one of the first people I ever met, but I don't remember how I met you. Uh. Well, if I was one of the first people you've ever met, I may have been the doctor that you know helped helped uh, deliver you at the the day you. I were said born. in the business. Um, fuck, I don't know. To be honest with you, I kn- I knew Jeff Mayweather. Um, Jeff Mayweather, actually, one of my first um, uh, I I guess breaks in the boxing industry was hanging around the Mayweather gym around two thousand nine, two thousand ten when it first opened. And wasn't a lot of people in there because a lot of people didn't know the gym was open and it wasn't technically open to the public. Just like kind of a few people uh, would get in. And um, <clears throat> I knew Roger and I met Jeff through Roger. And I don't remember exactly how I met Jeff, but somehow you and I um, met each other. We met through Jeff somehow, some way. But that's how I became close with Jeff. Um <clears throat> And you just popped up somewhere, but I don't remember honestly. And then we were friends for a while, and then and then uh, you've then always we talked for a couple of years because uh, then and then now you are a high ranking executive at top rank. You run the show over there because you got some blackmail shit on some people over there, so you're untouchable. Uh, no, that's and you're also the guy behind the loaded gloves that Tyson Fury had against uh, against uh, Wilder, right? Not true. Not <laughs> I'm uh, to some of the conspiracy theorists out there. There's some conspiracies out there, but no, it's uh, you know, yeah, no, you you've just always been there, man. I don't know, I don't remember how it's it's if if we you and I were ever like on a couple show or something like that and say, well, hey, how'd you guys first meet? Where unfortunately, there's no romantic backstory to our uh, our uh, our friendship. All right. So anyway, yep. Top rank. Been there for a well, while now. What, about ten years, something like that. Been a while. A little over ten years. This will yeah. be a couple months. It'll be eleven, actually. Awesome. All right. Cool. I I, I did my part. Not 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 your show. All right. So what we're going to be discussing here is we're just going to go over the current affairs right now in boxing, the headlines, and uh, I guess the main headline that's been. Uh, being talked about for the past two days uh, today, really, it's starting to marinate. But they've announced that there was an agreed fight between Gervonta Davis and Frank Martin. Um, I didn't really like look into it, so unfortunately, I don't know what the date is. But it's what they're talking about, and um, which is a potential fight to happen. And you know, um, when, if it happens, Jody, what do you think about that? And how do you think that goes? Well, if we're judging off the last performance of Martin, I don't think it goes well for him. 
um you know he looked well uh, looked really good but up until that you know the last fight uh i was right the last one was the one here right uh i believe so yeah um yeah that was a fight that he he didn't look great in um and of course i'm not gonna like the chances of most people against tank but uh yeah i mean i don't know i'm not i don't <clears throat> not too high on his chances but you know you never know um yeah it was here it was in uh july of last year so uh, one that you know you know decision against uh I won't, I won't even pronounce the name right but i don't know i mean I'd like to see him a lot i like frank a lot um good dude but uh yeah i'm not i'm not sure about his chance of being too good you um i never met frank martin but him and i we we kind of you know the nickname to francis is frank to in some cultures so i don't believe his real name is francis but mine is and but people go call me frank and i go by that so we have we share the same name i've never met him i'd be honest with you i'd be lying to you if i said i actually watched an entire fight of his um i haven't i'm not really familiar but you know a lot of people have, have been mentioning his name over i would say the past two years he was uh tabbed to fight shakur stevenson um you know, when Shakur Stevenson fought Edwin De Los Santos, that was supposed to be Frank Martin in there, but I guess that fell apart. So that's how I know Frank Martin, but he has a little bit of the name. And, you know, obviously, Javante Davis is one of boxing's big attractions, where probably the, uh, I'm going to say probably, he is definitely the, the biggest star in the United States as far as boxing is concerned, uh, and arguably the biggest star in the sport period. So... You know, we're uh, we're looking, always looking to see the big names, the big uh, big attractions in the sport. Try to see them fight the best competition or the the, the next biggest name that they can get a, a, against them. And and if you think about it, with with you know another one of our topics later on in the show, uh, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, with those two guys being uh, tangled up right now for their own date and. You know, you got Shakur Stevenson, who's kind of not in that talk right now. Um, Tiafimo Lopez just fought. There's not a lot of people for Javante Davis to fight. And, you know, Frank Martin may not be the biggest name, but he's he's undefeated. And um, as I mentioned, he, he, he has made headlines in the past recently. So um, it's a good fight. I don't, I don't really give him, him much of a chance with um, – with Travante Davis, but you know it, it's a fight. People are going to tune in. A lot of people like to tune in to Javante Davis's fights, and um, that would be great. I may not be one of them, but you know I'll definitely read the headlines like I'm doing now to give uh, content for this uh, show that we're doing here. And uh, yeah, no, um, I, I want to touch on Frank Martin as well. I was actually talking to somebody today in the top ranked gym about Derek James. Who is uh? Are you hold your cell phone or what? No, no. <laughs> Keep moving the camera. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I have a computer. I have cell phones right here. Um, oh, so, so we were discussing uh, Derek James and how Derek James, you know, the previous year was the boxing trainer of the year, and last year he didn't really have the best year. I think the only fighter that he won with was Frank Martin. Uh, he lost with um, Errol Spence. He lost with uh, uh, Jermel Charlo, uh, and he lost with uh, Anthony Joshua when Anthony Joshua fought Usyk, and he lost with there was one more that he he lost with. All his big names had had uh, had lost, and um, you know I think that's that's where Frank Martin's going to fall. I don't you know I'm I'm not the biggest Derek. James fan. I mean, he does have some very talented fighters who were world champions or may still currently be world champions. I just don't, you know, with all, with those couple factors I had just mentioned. It's amazing though how you can go from being trainer of the year to a shitty trainer in people's and, eyes. And it's kind of like in a way, it's a sophomore curse, man. A lot of these guys that win fighter of the year, or these a lot of these guys that win those big awards, they don't follow it up the following year with. Uh, it, you know, an equally stellar year as they had previously. It's usually like when they win those awards, the following year um, becomes a hardship for them. So it all crumbles. So mm-hmm. we'll see. And then now we got the, the flavor of the month or of the year is Bomac now, right? And, so. and you know, Bomac, 
uh, Bo Mack, who I consider a friend in this industry, um, you know, is just actually with him today. He has a really nice table of of, uh, of fighters. He's got champions. He's got stars. He's got future champions, pet prospects. He's picked up a lot of guys. I think, you know, uh, I mean, unless Bud Crawford runs into something he, he shouldn't run into, I think that I think he'll be fine. He's, he's got Chris Eubank Jr., um, uh, Lester Martinez, Troy Isley, Floyd Cashflow, Diaz. I mean, there's a there's a whole bunch of other ones. He just recently got Avius Griffin, um, uh, Tristan Calcruth, uh, the uh, Keyshawn Davis, who currently right now is one of the biggest names in boxing. Uh, he's got Keon Davis, who's a stellar amateur looking to make the Olympic run. And um, Kelvin Davis, who um, in his own right is one of the uh, top prospects. In sports. I'm interested to, to see how you you would handle this this question. How what do you think? Since you kind of know both of them are, are very uh, knowledgeable, to both with Keyshawn and uh, Tia Fimo, what do you think of their little beef? Is that a fight you'd like to see? <clears throat> it's crazy to say. It's crazy to you know, Jody. You got you got a little bit of um, uh, uh, I want to say a little bit. You have plenty of uh experience being around Tiafimo Lopez and you remember when I brought him around when he was young when first you know really not a lot of big bear together with him and his dad he used to you know so like you knew him when he was a young young upstart and not a lot of people knew knew him and it's crazy to say it's been I've known him for about eight years and uh you know, to see where he's at now. He's now a veteran. He's now a, you know, he's accomplished a lot. And now you have a a fighter who was similar to where he was when Tiafimo was in Keyshawn Davis's current position. And Keyshawn is, uh, is right now, he's being brash. He's being very outspoken. And he's, he's out there. He's making a name for himself. And with his last performance against Ho- Jose Pedraza, I think he has a right to be brash and outspoken. And, you know, it's they're they're both similar, I think, in age. I don't think there's a big age difference. I think it might be one or two years. I'm I'm not certain Keyshawn's age, but Tiafimo's twenty six. Um I don't know if I could be fact checked right now for I'll tell you, uh, Keyshawn is twenty four. Twenty four. So it's 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 a two year difference, but as far as professional experience Actually he'll be twenty five on the twenty eighth, so so, so there you go. It's not not a big age difference, but but Keyshawn is on his way up. Keyshawn is a is a contender, and he sees something in Tiafimo that he believes will, you know, make him uh, the better fighter on on the evening. Should they fight? And, Who do you think was at fault for uh, Tiafimo looking less than spectacular? Do you think it was on Tiafimo or on Ortiz? Um, I I think. I think, you, you know, it's it's a matter of I think it's I think it's focus. I, you know, and I, I don't I I can't obviously pull the curtain over too much for you guys to peek behind mm-hmm. it and see what's actually going on there. But I mean, if you look at the fight, I think Tia Fimo maybe has had lacked um, game plan. I would say for for that fight. I don't know if he really saw that fight going beyond five, six rounds. And I don't know if he was prepared um, with the game on the game plan aspect to go that far. Um, Jermaine Ortiz had the game plan and speaking of game plan, had the game plan of playing it safe and boxing and hit, not get hit. And I thought he did very well with that. Uh, until the last three rounds, which, you know, I, I, I didn't really watch the fight being there live, mm. but what I had seen, you know, um, it was, it was a little bit of a nail biter. It was a head scratcher because you weren't, you weren't really certain who was going to, uh, win, you know, sure. In, in uh, the, whoever wins, whoever had done enough requirements to gain a victory should, should be declared the victor. But, you know, in this case, a lot of champions or a lot of the bigger names, uh, they have that. You have to slay the dragon. You just can't get around them. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's – Jermaine didn't slay the dragon. That was Tiafimo. He just maybe had gotten around him. 
And in the judge's eyes, that was not enough to, you know, be declared the victor. And, you know, in Tiafimo's case, um, I just think Tiafimo, just his, his preparation beyond five, six rounds uh, just wasn't there. I think he's, he's the type. He tries to get his guys out of there in one, two rounds. Um, he did a great job, I think, of promoting that fight. Uh, he, he Listen, the one thing, if you're a promoter and you have Tiafimo Lopez on your roster, the, the one thing for certain is you're not going to have an issue with that guy pulling his own, pulling his load to uh, promote an event. He did that. He did the best he could do, and I think he did too much. And and it showed. It wasn't the, it wasn't the greatest fight. There was flaws in both both guys. Um, it, it, it's hard to say. I mean, I could could have Jermaine Ortiz done enough to win? Yes, he I, he could have done enough to win. But it's that that age old uh, scenario where you have to really beat the champion to take his titles from him, not just squeak a uh, squeak by or just you know, in that case, do what, what was done that night. So it, it's, it's tough to say. Um, I know one thing with, with Tia Fimo, he seems to fight to the level of his opposition, right? I mean, he didn't look great here. Uh, Cambosis, no one gave him a chance, you know, gave Cambosis a chance and Cambosis won. And then most people didn't think Tia Fimo had a chance to get Lomachenko. He wins that. And of course, a lot of people predicted Josh Taylor to beat him and he looks spectacular there. So it seems like he kind of fights to the level, like if you doubt him, He's going to show you wrong, but if if he's supposed to win, you know he might go out there and even well, if he gets by, still lay an egg. Jody, you could say the same thing about Jermaine Ortiz. I mean, look at Jermaine Ortiz's two the two best performances in his career were losses, close losses, disputed losses. The first one was to Lomachenko, um, and the second one was to Tiafimo. And then you know you even go back to his uh, his other blemish, which is a draw. He fought Joseph Adorno, which was a really good fight, and. I thought was under the circumstances where Jermaine had struggled really bad to struggled really bad to make to make weight with Joseph Adorno. Um, I still thought he he had a good performance, um, especially with with him getting dropped twice during that fight. But you know, again, he fought Lomachenko. A lot of people didn't give him a chance. Uh, some people thought he won. Some people thought it was a draw. And some people thought he he kept it close with the with the legend. And then with Tiafimo, you got a lot of people. Uh, that think Jermaine should have should have won that fight. So it's it's it could be a little bit of both. It could be Jermaine just had a really good night, and Tiafimo did what you said. He had a he he maybe he, he underestimated. He didn't really get out of bed the way he did for uh, Lomachenko and 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 Josh Taylor. Um, well, go ahead. Oh, no, so that's that. And then and then you know what? Let's let's just like kind of it is it isn't really like a fucking segue, but. You know, we'll go into the next one. You know, you covered that one. The Tiafimo Jermaine, I, I just want to I want to get past that fight. That was a tough week for me. It was a tough event that I worked. Um, I, I like both guys, obviously, and um I really like I didn't I didn't really care so much who won, but but I was gonna feel bad because I knew whoever lost it was gonna be tough on. And of course, you know, I even had to tell Jermaine after the fight, like, hey man, listen. You know, this is what happens in boxing. Um, you know, just keep your head up. You know what you know. You know what I'm saying? People are going to tell you um, that you won. If, if the public's perception is is that you won that fight, you got to take this like you took the Loma fight. And the Loma fight, even though you lost, you still came out a winner, and you have to do the same thing uh, uh, with this fight. And then just move on to the next one. And, and the great thing about boxing is – you you can talk up a rematch somewhere down the line if you just go in there and you just start, you know. I mean, he has to obviously get around what Keyshawn Davis is doing to antagonize Tiafimo. But look at look what Keyshawn Davis did, and I and I wouldn't even I'm not going to even lie to you. I knew Keyshawn Davis was going to call Tiafimo out. You know that was the plan. I knew I knew Keyshawn Davis had even mentioned it in the gym that after he went through and he obviously the plan was was to be dominant and, and and just put on a destructive performance against Jose Pedraza which he did and after the fight he was going to call Tiafimo there was there were some things going on there and I knew it and you know I think Tiafimo also knew it and 
it, I thought it turned out good. I thought Keyshawn – that evening, and I hate to even go back to that show, but I think Keyshawn stole that show. I mean, there were some great performances on the undercard by Abdullah Mason. And, um, uh, again, there's some other good performances by some young fighters. But Keyshawn Davis, I think, took that show with his, his Jose Pedraza performance, calling out Tiafimo at the post-fight interview, and then – after Tiafimo's fight, him, you know, uh, attempting to jump into the ring to confront. And I just, I think that was all great. I think that's the type of stuff that's good for boxing. I think, uh, especially for top rank, um, you know, that's, it's, it's a grudge match, man. And grudge matches sell. And what's fight like, what's fight week like for you? By the time fight night comes, are you just ready to be, for it to be over and, and get home? Or do you love every minute of it or what? I mean, in many ways, I love every minute of it because I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I'm there. And, I, you know, I love being a part of it. But at the same time, it's, it's exhausting. You know, you you kind of – it's it's crazy. You, you, you're – in, in every, every simple aspect of boxing, you're preparing a meal, right? And because you're the chef, you're preparing that meal. You know, you're obviously, obviously taste testing. So you kind of know, okay, this tastes good, but now I gotta, I gotta give it to the, the, the consumer, the person that's purchasing this, this meal, and it's up to them if they like it or not. So finally, you're like, shit, we prepared this meal. I cooked it. I did every ingredient. I put a little bit of love into it. I thought it was good. I served it up, and it was up for the up to the public. So yeah, it's you kind of already know the on the evening of the fight which which going to happen but it's boxing you're always going to bump into a surprise here or there but you kind of already it's you kind of already because of the work that was put in the stuff that you've seen around you can kind of almost predict what's going to happen you're kind of like a fighter though like it, i was talking about andres cortez who just had a big win here this past week he he i was surprised because andres is such a nice sweet guy but those couple weeks before the fight, he becomes an asshole. And I, and I mean that actually, you know, and a lot of fighters do, you know, when they're cutting the weight, they're getting that mentality, that kind of thing. Like, like with me, do you, when you see me, well, fight, no, I, that's what I was going to get to because on, on Tuesday, like when they had the, the, the fighter workouts and, you know, I see, and we say hi and, you know, you say hi, but you can see you're different. It's not like I can just come up and, you know, chat with you because you, you're kind of more focused, you know, you're kind of like, you know, I ain't got time for this chit chat shit. I'm doing this, you know, so you kind of almost become like a fighter. Whereas, you know, you're, you're out to Frank that I'm used to, um, whereas you're more like, you know, dare I say almost professional like, and, and you gotta, you have to, you have to dial back. You come, you come check me out in the gym or any, any other place like before fight week, man, I'm Frank, you know what I'm saying? You get, you know, I listen, I love a lot of people, man. I get a lot, I got great relationships with a lot of people and then, and I cherish all my relationships and friendships and and acquaintanceships and stuff that I made in boxing. But it's, I do warn people ahead of time, if I don't go to fights, and this is one of the reasons I don't go to fights unless I'm working. And if I'm working that event, it's, you're going to have to like, I'm going to have to see you and I'm going to have to be, I'm going to have to feel bad and be like, shit, I'm really like ignoring this person. Or, you know, I, at least I could take is two, three minutes it's not going to kill me, but sometimes you don't have two, three minutes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes everything is 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 so timed. So yeah, from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it was it was just hectic. And 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 you want to say like, hey, after everything's all said and done, we can we can hang out and maybe have a good time. But bro, I'm too fucking exhausted. So it's like to answer the original question is yeah, you kind of do hope that it's that it's over. But but it's the same thing. It's like a fight night. We all. Um, I don't want to say everybody, but like I like to prepare an outfit for Fat Fight Night. I like to have, I like to wear something. Um, I don't like wearing suits. I threw all the suits out of my closet, um, except for I have one black funeral suit, and I've been fortunate to not have to use it. But I have one suit in case I have to go to a funeral. Um, but the rest of my suits, my Fight Night suits, I used to wear when I first started. I threw them out. I don't feel like I need to wear that stuff. So I come creative with, with outfits, shoes, sneakers, whatever. And I don't really get a chance to show it off, but I like to dress nice. It's like the one, you know, one, once in a while I, I dress nice is when I'm working a fight. I don't, I, at least I feel like I'm dressing nice, but, but, um, but I'm working and, um, I couldn't tell you, bro, the last time, 
you know, and I was probably with you the last time I actually went to a fight to where I got to just sit back and kick it. I think you invited me and I was, you know, I was still with top rank, but I think we did a, maybe like a PBC show or something where, uh, you brought me in as, uh, as the media oh, and yeah. I got the, you know, I got to really enjoy myself a little bit more cause I wasn't working, got to watch the fights a little bit, got to talk to some people I don't normally see or get, get an opportunity to talk to outside of the work environment environment. So you, and you know, the same too, bro, you know, when you you're there, just, you know, you know, when you're just there to be there and you know, when you have to work, right. you know that as well, you know, when it's like, well, fuck, I really got to work. I really got to go out there and get my shit. I got more responsibility on this event that I do normal events. So you, you get into, you get into the zone and it's, it's, it's kind of like, I, I will never say what, what I go through is what a fighter goes through. I can't imagine what some of these fighters go through because at the end of the day, um, I mean, I, I could fuck up any day and I could lose my job, but on fight night, if all your ducks aren't in a row and your, your preparation isn't exquisite, your, your life and your livelihood can all come to an end that evening. You know what I'm saying? There's very, very likely a fighter loses uh, they got to face the facts that there could be a pink slip waiting for them Monday morning in their email, uh, mm -hmm. because the promoter doesn't want to go forward with them. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot going on. Like if a guy had prepared every, every inch that he could prepare and he still comes up short, the, the disappointment in that, um, I mean, I could fuck up and I could lose my job, but, but hey, I, how many, uh, so when there's a big fight, let's say a Tyson Fury fight, a Terrence Crawford fight, or whoever, um, how many people on a, on a big fight do you think hit you up for tickets? I, I know you don't like to be a dick, but you can be when, when necessary. And uh, how do you try to normally, you know, your guy that talks to you once every two years, hey, Frank, you know, I'm in town. Good to see you. Give me a couple of front rows tickets to the Fury fight or whatever. Yeah, you got fight week friends, and and they're and it's annoying, man. Because I now I'd let people know I do get tickets. I do get, I get anywhere from two to a lot, right? But it just depends on the event and and what what I can get. And there's been times I bought some, but but like if you want to lose you want to lose a friendship or a relationship, um, deal with tickets. Uh, that's exactly what 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 I do because it's 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 my job, man. And at the end of the day, I do um operate the, the the gym in Vegas but I'm still in the business of selling tickets man we're still in the business of selling events so you know whatever I do it all correlates with selling tickets to uh, an eventual event you know so with with this case um yeah people can get annoying I know when someone's calling me on fight week I haven't heard I know I already know so I don't answer the phone and I try to let people know, like, if they do get a chance to, 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 to speak to me and ask me if I have any tickets, I say, usually I tell them, I say, listen, if I don't offer them, I don't have them. And I will, I'll offer. There's a, there's a, there's a few people that like, they know I'm going to get them covered, um, regardless because they help me out on a daily basis. But, but as far as like fight week friends can't, I asked you once a, a couple of years ago and you helped me out for a small show in California and it went miserably for both of us so i oh, learned yeah. my lesson and we'll never <laughs> ask you for well, tickets. See what happened i came through and you got bro it was a fucking perfect ticket this was sat whoever it was sat right next to fucking bob Aram. so you know yeah. that i yeah. never got a good ticket good seat like that again let's just let's just put that out as far as like comps but yeah, like, it was a small show it wasn't a big show but yeah we i, I learned my i think we both learned a lesson there I, um, it's it's a pain in the ass and i feel bad for the fighters because it's such a distraction man it gives you anxiety it puts anger it just it makes you feel a certain way about people and and it's just like this man I, I if you can't put yourself in that situation to where you you have a whole bunch of people coming to you for something you most likely can't provide for them and and i can't and i don't and i don't want to feel i don't feel bad i used to feel bad now i just get fucking annoyed and and it sucks, man. So if you if you want free tickets, if if your plug is Frank Steyer, man, you're doing something wrong. Because for one, I don't want to do it for you. I'm going to stay out of the the, the comp ticket business. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing I can suggest is start politicking your way up to uh, 
uh, a more important person that can get you comp tickets. Well, the thing people don't realize, because I get people asking me, they think I have tickets too, because you know I get credentials. They think I have tickets which I have no access to. But if you're if you're there to support the product, you know it's, it's then buy the then buy it. You know, I mean, if you're if you you don't you're not supporting boxing by getting free tickets, right? You you know you, you go buy so, your tickets. So see this, like I have this right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna I'm gonna uh, what's it called? Uh, it's a it's an all access twenty for the year 2024 2025. So it expires December 31st 2025. You know, you you want to go to a top rank event? Get one of them. That's my credential to get in. Can any I use yours? Huh? Can I use yours? No, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's like that's 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 what I got, and that's not a you know that's I fuck I earn I earn that. And the thing is, the reason I earned it is I don't get to watch the fights, man. I don't get to sit there and enjoy the fights. I get to be stopped by people that you know. It's it's. Look, you go to somebody's job and they're they're actually working. You might be able to get a couple seconds out of them, um, you know, where they're they're nice. I I mean I don't know. You go to a um uh, uh someone who's who's a waiter and they're they're over there they're waiting tables or waiting at the bar or something like that. They're not going to stop and talk to you for twenty minutes, and they're not you know you're not going to ask them, hey, since you work here, can I get free food and free drinks? You know what I'm saying? Do. As a former waiter, people definitely do that. No, but I would never because I know right. that's your job and you're fucking working. And and me, I go to work to make money, not fucking spend money, and not give away money. So were, were you scared when though I saw you, you stepping in between uh, uh, Jermaine and and Tia Fimo there on the on the weigh-in day? What what was that all about? Were you were you? Oh, were you I, knew not, I knew nothing was gonna happen. I didn't. I knew nothing was gonna happen. I was just. I just had to look like I was busy. That's all. Mm -hmm. I had to just, I had to just get in there to make it look like I was I was up there for a reason. And it was probably like, someone was trying to stop you to ask for some free tickets. As soon as you, I have to, oh, I have to work. I, let me do this real quick. Yeah, I had to do something. But no, no, I've been helping out. I've been helping out with that with with escorting uh, some of the camps and stuff. And um, it's it's actually a fun job. And and the great thing is, as I mentioned, like your relationships with people. If you got a good relationship, and no, I'm, 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 I was walking around that fight week like I was security, and you know, shout out to Kenny, who's the director of security for for Top Rank. Um, I was his counterpart for uh, the, the past two events in Vegas, and I had a I had a great time doing that stuff. So it's it's not a matter of I'm going to sit there and I'm going to break up a fight to to championship level competitors, and I'm going to stand in there and be like get the fuck away. You go this way, you go that way. But it's a matter of, is because I have good relationships with all these guys. I could be a voice of reason. Hey man, Hey, can you just listen to me for a second? Most of these guys, they do. So, and I did notice that whenever, when you stuck your hand out there, you were looking for the cameras for like a photo op. So you could be like in the perfect place to have your hand out and still be uh smiling for the cameras. So yeah, you're very bro. aware of that, right? Yeah, bro. You want, you want to, you know what I, you want one of the best joys is, is when people see me in the locker rooms on fight night, and they 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 grab still shots. I I actually like that stuff. I don't really I like pretend I don't want to be in in the shots, but I am. Well, I, I don't I don't mind it. I do like people seeing that shit. I mean, I don't like to see how fucking um, goofy I look half the time, but you know. Hey hey, let's let's switch gears a little if we can. It's not top rank stuff, but uh, I know you're willing to talk about anything. What do you think about the the, the Middle East specifically? It looks like Riyadh and, and Saudi Arabia, but you know they're kind of uh, taking a run at the you know the king of boxing location, trying to take over for Vegas. Yo, it's great, man. It's it's you know why it's great? It's great because the fights that you know that are not being made because of financial reasons are being made. So Saudi Arabia is out there. They're providing entertainment for their people. You know, they're pro providing any, um, sorry, um, entertainment for uh, um, the Saudis and, you know, everybody around the world. And it's, you know, the, the, the they can afford it. They're out there, you know, and I, I don't mean, I don't get me wrong. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it, enjoy it while you can. I mean, that heavyweight event that they had in, in February was spectacular. It's the first the first of its kind. I've never seen such a stacked uh, card with, with with so much superpower on there. That 
Um, I know that at, at these days and ages, definitely couldn't be made. Every I think almost every fight, probably there was a, if that was a ten fight card, I would say about seven of those ten fights could have been main events anywhere, and it was all on one event. So uh, I mean, what they're doing is is great. I, they're putting on dream fights. Uh, you know, look at Francis and Ganu. Um, yeah, see, I don't know if they got lucky or, or they're 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 just good, but uh, you know, no one thought Ngannou was going to do that with Fury, right? Be competitive, and it, 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 they did. They did. Uh, they did. Jake Paul and Tommy Fury, a fight that was 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 attempted to be made, but they came up with it. So there's, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's also it's brilliant, and I and I commend uh, His Excellency, and I commend everybody that is. Uh, uh, working under him as far as putting on these great events. I know top rank, we've had a part in a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, a few of their events. And, you know, I just, I, I'm, I haven't been out there. I haven't had the pleasure of being out there, but everybody that, that has told me that they've been out there and they were, they, you know, obviously it's a, it's, it's work. These guys aren't going out there and they're not being, um, uh, they're not going on a vacation or a holiday. They're going out there and they're going out there to work, but they're the, the accommodations, uh, the sites, the professionalism, uh, top notch and, and second to none. So I, I think it's great. Um, I can't make a promise on how long that's going to last, but it's, um, <laughs> it's great. And as a boxing fan, I'm, I'm grateful to get a chance to see those, uh, those fights and, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to see what's next. I'm looking for this, looking forward to this, uh, Anthony Joshua and Francis and Ganu fight. I'm looking forward to obviously Tyson Fury and, um, uh, what's Usyk, um, and you know, everything else that they have. So I commend them and I commend every, uh, everybody involved. You know, we've seen some of these other organizations here in the States and I, I won't throw anyone on the bus, but they know they are uh, that have put on some of these uh you know we'll call them you know cartoon fights or whatever and didn't go well and they're no longer around but but like i said the saudis like i said they you know whether they're lucky or good it, it's been very entertaining and and you know people thought oh fury and gondola it's, it's a joke fight jake paul it's and Tommy Fury is a joke fight and both of them were, were anything but right um and gondola shocked the world and many people thought he won that fight um paul and fury uh, the, you know who won that fight you know that suffered dispute so um you know that they they walked right into another big fight with with Ngannou fighting Joshua now. So um, it seems like they're they're willing to do stuff a little more. You know, take more of a chance than than at least the mainstream organizations are here in the states. You know, as far as put on Ngannou and Fury and you know, and of course it turned out gold for him with with Ngannou being uh, you know put on such a great display. Um, what do you think about Joshua though? I I you know, the same thing on paper, I'm thinking, wow, Joshua's going to win this easy because he's going to take him serious now. He's going to see where Fury maybe overlooked him and that kind of thing. And, you know, Joshua's a very talented guy and he's going to mop the floor with him. But on the other hand, you know, and God knows that power can take out anybody one shot. So, well, that's the beauty of boxing. Like I said, you kind of go into these fights. If you, if you worked around it, you kind of go in these fights and you can almost predict right spot on what's going to happen. Um, I'm not involved in anything as far as the uh, the lead up to this fight, but what the storyline behind this fight is, you know, is is brilliant because yeah, of course, on paper, Anthony Joshua, Olympic gold medalist, uh, two time heavyweight champion of the world. Um, I don't know if it's two time and maybe more, but he's multi time heavyweight champion of the world, coming off of a great win in his last fight, and. You know, Francis Ngannou, as you mentioned, he fought the the best heavyweight of this era and arguably one of the greatest heavyweights of all time in Tyson Fury. A lot of people thought he did enough to win that fight. So it's like you could say to yourself, yeah, no, Joshua should win this fight. It's a fluke. Ngannou uh, just got lucky that night. Fury probably didn't train. Probably something was wrong with him or whatever. And Or, you know, you can say, yeah, Joshua should beat him, but – Man, Francis can punch, man. The stuff you hear from the people that have been around Francis and Ganu is that is one of the strongest human beings that has ever existed. And, you know, fighters have been in the ring with them, whether it's sparring or in pro fights. They said they've never been hit 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 by anything as hard as Francis and Ganu. 
and and you know he ha- obviously he has the power to connect. Um, I mean, he has the power, and if he connects on Anthony Joshua, it could be you know his night. And in his second pro fight, um, you know he's he 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 could have you know in many people's eyes or or even definitively with Joshua beat the two best heavyweights of this era in both of those guys. So it, it's it's a it's definitely. Uh, one of the beautiful things of boxing is that element of surprise and, you know, tuning into that fight, you, you just don't know. You might see a clinic, you might see, uh, from Anthony Joshua, or you might see Francis Ngannou box great and, and just use his power and, and neutralize Anthony Joshua and win a, and win a fight. You just, you just don't know. And that's the great beauty of just tuning in and just expecting the unexpected. What do you think about, uh, so the other fight, Usyk and Fury, um, you know, it, it's kind of weird. Fury's got one belt, Usyk's got all the rest, but I think most people think of Fury. If you just say who's heavyweight champ, they'll automatically fire off Fury. But, you know, we saw him use his huge size against Deontay Wilder to his benefit, right, where he leaned on him the whole fight. Francis, much bigger guy, couldn't do that. Now he's going back to a smaller guy in Usyk. Do you, do you see him trying to go back to the strategy he had with uh, Wilder and trying to lean on him and, you know, wear him out, you know, putting all that weight on him? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's that should be the game plan. But I know the game plan. I know Sugar Hill's system is these guys aren't going in there to just do what they got to do to win the fight. They're going in there to if they got to tire them out, put the weight on there. But they're also going in there to land big shots and knock out uh, Alexander Usyk. Uh, so that's I know that's the game plan. Is if is that pl- game plan going to be executed to perfection? We just have to wait and see. We have to tune in in May and and just see. Or is Usyk going to go in there and and use his masterful boxing prowess to um, uh, beat Tyson Fury? You, you you really you just don't know. I mean, I I think Fury is is too big. Um, I think he's going to be in the best shape of his career. I think he's going to be. I don't think we're going to see him. Um, much more in the ring. I think this this could be his last hurrah, or or, or one of them. Um, but I expect him to show up that evening and uh, put on, you know, another performance for the ages and and, and defeat Alexander Usyk and become the undisputed four belt world heavyweight champion. Do you think he thinks he has something to prove after? you know, in the eyes of many disappointing performance against Ngannou? A hundred percent. There's a hundred percent. There's no way Tyson Fury doesn't carry that burden around with him. Doesn't carry the, you know, it, you have to question yourself. I mean, look, there's, there's nights you, you're going to have a bad performance or you're going to just have a bad day, a bad night. But that's a night where I know he didn't expect, and I know nobody else expected. Maybe Francis Ngannou and and Dewey Cooper uh, thought they had a shot, but I don't think anybody else did. So, of course, Tyson is going to want to – Tyson, in in, in his eyes, he's hoping uh, Francis beats Anthony Joshua just to maybe say, like, look, this guy is is that good. And then him beating Usyk and then maybe fighting Francis in a rematch and then erasing – you know, whatever happened, happened in the past, but you know, we'll see. Could it also be father time catching up to, yeah. to Tyson? Tyson's been in some wars, man, is in his career. You know, it, it could have been those, those three Deontay Wilder fights finally caught right. up with him. You know, and then a lot of people, a lot of people behind the scenes are saying the fact that, you know, he wasn't around you for the camp for this fight. And that, that probably led a lot to him not performing as well. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, Tyson wasn't around me for the Billy and White and Derek Shasura fight, and he looked outstanding in those fights. So um, it doesn't have nothing credit, to do. With, <laughs> it doesn't have nothing to do with that. I, I mean, I do like to think that when when I was around Tyson, I, I held my own weight and I provided and accommodated everything that you know I could to to help him. Uh, you know, perform at his best. I was there and whatever they needed, I did my best to uh, accommodate. So, you know, I, just because I wasn't there the last three, four fights, uh, doesn't mean I'm not there in spirit and I'm always uh, sending positive vibes. So do you think it'll be uh, based, I mean, I guess it's supposed to be, but the winner of these two fights meet again? Yeah. I think so. Who comes out of it? Um, 
it, listen, in a perfect in a perfect world, I think this this is this is the scenario. If this was like WWE, I would I would somehow make Francis Ngannou win, beat Anthony Joshua. Um, Tyson Fury beats Usyk in whatever fashion he has to beat him, and then you go in there and you have that rematch, and then Tyson Fury, uh, you know, gets I don't want to say gets his revenge, but you know, in the rematch, uh, definitively beats Francis Ngannou, and then rides off in the sunset and retires and uh, puts on an, a, an additional hundred pounds and enjoys his life uh, for as long as he lives. So I know another guy you're pretty high on is fighting out in, uh, in Saudi. Uh, you got Zhang fighting Parker. Yeah, I'm. 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 I, I like Zhang. I think. I think Zhang is um, a very talented guy. He's a, he's a southpaw, but in in many ways he's he's a big guy who I think is is pretty light on his feet. Um, he throws a lot of punches, a lot of hard punches, but but I love his footwork. I love his movement. I think he's. Uh, um, you know, um, very good, very good fighter, different kind of fighter. It's not something you see every day. And, you know, his, his last two fights against, um, uh, Joe Joyce were, you know, um, statement makers and, you know, Joseph Parker is another guy who, you know, Joseph Parker lost to, um, uh, the guy that, Zhang just beat in, in, in Joe Joyce, but Joseph Parker's also coming off of a big win over Deontay Wilder. So, yeah, that, uh, and that was, so what do you think on that one? So I know Joseph Parker is someone that most people never, you know, they kind of looked at him as a gatekeeper, right? You know, he's the guy you beat on the way to being champ. Um, and then we see him just dominate Wilder and the whole fight, you know, everyone's just expecting, okay, Wilder's going to come on at some point and knock this dude out. Never did. Do you think that's uh, that maybe that we underestimate Parker or that, Deontay, like you said about uh, uh, Fury, same thing with Wilder. You know, those wars with Fury might have taken a lot of, out of him, and he's done at this point. No, I mean, listen, man, we, we can't forget Joseph Parker is a former world heavyweight champion. He was the WBO heavyweight champion for, for some time. Uh, he's got a win over he beat Andy Ruiz. He's the first person to defeat Andy Ruiz. He, you know, he lost to Anthony Joshua. Um uh, but it's, it, you know, I, I think we wrote Joseph Parker off after his loss to Joe Joyce, him getting knocked out by Joe Joyce. But it's this is this is boxing. This is heavyweight boxing. Uh, you know, anything things can change, man. Uh, fighters and uh, uh, skills can deteriorate, and I think that was the case with Deontay Wilder. I think Deontay Wilder. Um, never recovered from the, as I mentioned, Fury probably is still feeling the effects of the three fights with, with uh, Deontay Wilder. I don't think Deontay Wilder ever had a chance to recover, heal, and, um, you know, just, just, I, I think it, it took, it took a lot of years of his life away, those three Fury fights. And I think it showed on the, the evening against Joseph Parker. There are definitely some fun fights coming up here in the next couple of months in the, in the Middle East and in, in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia, looking forward to those. Hopefully, I'll get to attend them. But uh, yeah, man, they're especially heavyweight boxing. They're taking over. It looks like. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> the, I mean, I mean, listen. If if I would say like this, we'd be if it wasn't for. And I'm not going to sit here and kiss the 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 you know I'm not going to kiss the, the 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 ass here of of people putting on these fights. But if Saudi Arabia is putting on great fights period um especially these heavyweight fights so i think without that the heavyweight division wouldn't be in the position that it's in right now so okay. the heavyweight division is in a good position because of the, the great fights that are being put on in the kingdom of saudi arabia um well with that being said there's other great fights that are happening outside of saudi arabia there's yeah. uh Devin Haney versus uh, Ryan Garcia, which is you know which, two popular young fighters that know each other from the amateurs, um, that have had success in the pros, really good success in the pros. Uh, they're they're facing off um, against each other, and that's um, so. So, what's with the venue change? Is there anything you can disclose for us? You don't know, can't discuss it. Uh, no, 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 I don't. I don't know. Um, 
you know, I'm very close with the the Haney's and um, you know, I I like to think that I was um, a big help to those guys in the last four camps, two Cambosis fights, the Loma fight, and the uh, the, the last fight with Regis. Uh, but as of as of this very moment, I don't have anything to do with um, anything leading up to the Ryan fight. I I've I've briefly uh, chatted with Devin about a week ago and. Uh, you know, Devin's all business, man. Devin is, look, he's the, I, I respect his, I respect his, his work ethic. And I think he has the best work ethic in, in boxing. So, you know, we'll see, um, we'll see that get put together on you, uh, April 20th. What do you think of, of, uh, who was it? Teddy? I don't think it was Teddy Alice. Somebody said that, of all those guys, you know, like uh, Tiafimo, Ryan, and Devin, that uh, Devin. What was that? Wait. What was that? I'm not. Why don't I think it was Teddy? It might not have been Teddy Ellis, but if somebody had said that Devin, of all the guys in and around his weight, you know, maybe he, you know, he's not as athletically gifted, maybe, but he seems to work harder than them, you know, especially like Ryan. Ryan's a better athlete. But Devin, no, I, I say this all the time. There's not like, like, like he probably, Devin has probably the best jab in, in the sport. He's, um, he's a very good, hellacious body puncher. He's, he's always in great condition. Um, but I don't think he was ever athletically gifted like guys like Tiafimo Lopez and, um, Shakur Stevenson, where these are two guys that can just roll out of bed and do things no other professional boxer or athlete can do. Uh, Devin Haney achieved that athletic, uh, that, that gift of athleticism through hard work for, from, from starting at a young age and just working hard and just, you know, the, look, we all know Devin is not hurting for anything financially. We all know Devin is, is, is doing pretty well for himself um when it comes to his earnings and stuff but he 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 trains and this is not I, i've never said this i'm actually like quoting somebody else he trains like he's broke man he trains like this is um this is his, his livelihood and and should he lose he can lose everything so i i i commend devin on his his work ethic and that's that's why he's one of the best fighters in the world today and he you know if he continues um his his current you know his current path of just going in there and working hard i mean listen two weeks ago before the fight was announced a little over two weeks ago he let me know that the fight was happening on april 20th and mm -hmm. uh before it was announced and he was all ready to start setting up for for camp and i was like man really i said you want me to you know, help you out with this in a couple of weeks. He's like, no, ASAP. And I'm like, Phew. you know, that's dedication to where, you know, there's a lot of guys that I've been around that train mm -hmm. one month for a championship and you, fight. And do you think that gives him a big advantage going into this fight? If you have, you know, most will think he's, you know, better anyway, but if you have one guy that, you know, trains like he's broke and another guy that a lot of people question maybe where his, uh, you know, if, if he's more focused on being a, you know, social media star or a boxer, do you think that gives Devin a huge advantage going into the fight? A hundred percent. There's uh, unless something um, uh, catastrophic happens, there's no way Devin can lose this fight. And and I know I'm sounding biased here, and it a little bit is biased, but it's it's look, man. I'm a firm believer because there's times I just sat around and I just thought I was going to get by on, you know, being a nice guy and being extremely handsome, right? But it, that didn't that didn't come. You had to work. You had to work hard. You know, one you out of two to, ain't bad though, right? right? One out all of them aren't. But but you have to work hard, man. And 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 listen, there's a lot of times you're gonna have to work like a fucking animal, man. You're gonna have to work like like I don't want to say an animal. Animals, I don't know if they. I have two animals in in, in my in my presence right now, and they don't work for shit. They're spoiled rotten. But you have to work harder than anyone else that there is. And when you do put in that hard work, it you eventually you see the payoff hard work and patience and then once the payoff happens you realize you just say hey shit it, that shit just didn't come by luck and natural 
it's because I went out there and I worked and I did the shit that um, nobody else is going to do. I'm doing diff- shit differently and I'm working hard differently. And it, it, it really, it does pay off. It does pay off. And that's one of the things I like to tell people is, man, you got, you got to show up and you got to fucking put in work, man. If you show up, you put in work and, and you're there, your time eventually will come. Now it could be soon or it could be later, but, but you continue to have those type of work ethics. And that's where Devin, Devin Haney is. Devin Haney has that first one in last one to leave work hard mentality. And, and you have to be obsessed. You have to be obsessed with it. You have to say to yourself, well, shit, if, is there something else I could do before this, this fight? And if, if there is, you're going to go fucking do it. You're going to go put that work in and do it. And that's what he does. And, you know, but, but listen, Ryan Garcia has uh blinding speed and he has uh, a, a very powerful, sharp left hook. And, you know, we'll see um, if that could be a factor. I don't think it will, but, you know, I want to, I want to sell this fight. I'm, I'm tuning into this fight on April 20th to uh, see my friend Devin Haney um, continue on with his path of greatness. So I guess go change the subject a little bit. What was it like? Uh, I know you're a big wrestling fan. We both are. We talk about it a lot. Uh, so the last fight there coincided with WWE having their was their their uh, their WrestleMania kickoff or whatever here at, in Vegas. So you got to meet. I saw at least a picture with Rhea Ripley. But uh, what was that like? Did you get to meet any other wrestlers? And what was that like? Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they Rhea Ripley and um, Big E came by to. Uh, and he did a lot of the fights. Yeah, he does, and I met Biggie when um, Terrence. Who did he do the intro for? He did intro for somebody, right, during a oh, walkout. Yeah. When Terrence Who? Crawford fought Sean Porter, he did the intro for Sean Porter. Oh, okay. He was friends with. They're still his friends with Sean Porter, and he, him, and Rhea Ripley um, was there. So it was cool to see Rhea Ripley because I think right now, if you're a WWE fan, and I don't want to say pro wrestling, I think right now WWE is just putting on such a freaking great. Uh, entertaining product for for wrestling fans um to watch and you know to to you know obviously you got the roman reigns cody rhodes the rock seth rollins all that stuff going on drew matt i mean so much you can name but rhea ripley right now is you know that's what what a what a superstar she's become um you got a big crush on me too i don't know if you knew that or not Oh, yeah, and and I'm and I'm a fan, so it's with with the Judgment Day stuff with her and Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, and um, uh, what's his name? It's the other guy's name, Senior Money in the Bank. I I can't believe I'm having a fun. Oh, uh, oh, you're talking about Damian Priest? Yeah. What the stuff that's going on with that? that you see our truth. You don't forget him. But I can't forget. But I'm just saying, like, just just that. I mean, that comedy stuff that's entertaining. But I mean, just the. Uh, the you know Dominic Mysterio being um, uh, such you know a classic heel like an all time great classic heel um, Damian Priest you know if you ever if you've seen the the match he had last year with Bad Bunny I never seen a crowd um, you know it was probably one of the best professional wrestling walkouts is when Bad Bunny uh, came out and the Puerto Rican crowd just you yeah. know I've never seen anything like that and then. You know the, the 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 performance there, and then you go. You know Finn Balor is one of the best um, wrestlers out there, and then you got Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley. Her her character work and obviously her in ring work is uh, really top of the game as far as women's professional wrestling. You said Bad Bunny. It's it's kind of crazy because you know in the old days we had people like you know Carl Malone or Drew Carey or people that you know weren't really wrestling, and then now we get Bad Bunny, Pat McAfee, and uh, and uh, of course, Logan, Logan Paul, you know, just, you know, they're going and looking as good, you know, as half the wrestlers on the roster, you know, doing a really great job at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, well, that's, look, man, that's, these are, these are people that are taking it, taking it serious. But at the same time, it's, it's being a wrestling fan. I mean, look, Jody, you, you've, um, we, about a year ago, we had a good time. You set up something for us to be a part of a, a I was going to say, you, and you got attacked. We got, you got attacked by a pro wrestler. You, you did it too. But, but the thing is, is, is like this, you know, I, I'd like to think our, our roles in that stuff were, were, were good. And it wasn't because it wasn't just because, you know, 
it ain't something we like really we practice or anything. I remember, you know, I don't want to I don't want to break kayfabe here, but who gives a shit? We all we did was discuss what we were going to do and and it happened. You know, even it, it wasn't the it was multiple shows. We played a little bit of character work and you know, you've you've gotten the physical confrontations with wrestlers and if you weren't such a passionate fan, I think of professional wrestling for um a, a majority of your life, you wouldn't have been out, been able to go out there and and deliver and perform uh, the way you did. And I think that's what Bad Bunny, Pat McAfee, yeah. and Logan Paul do. I think they were just wrestling fans and probably did the backyard wrestling stuff. They probably imitated what they saw on TV in their living room with their brothers or or whatever. And um, you know, you get to live out that type of dream. And that's one of the, that's one of the great things about pro wrestling, man. It's and you watch. Course- Oh, sorry. We did a lot less than they did. Obviously, we didn't have a match. But for me, I don't know if it's the same for you, but to me, it was kind of almost like a bucket list thing, right? You know, to, can you, you grow up as a wrestling fan? I want to be involved in part of that. So, you know, uh, ended so up being. I, where... That wasn't my first ever like um, mess around in professional wrestling. I've actually had had some run-ins with pro wrestling um, in in earlier part of my life, but okay. but but to be able to do that now with with you. And, you know, you get the, listen, man, it's, to me, it's those type of things, especially being at the age I'm at is, is you still get to enjoy those type of things. So like, that's one of the highlights of, of my, the middle of my life, man, the middle of my age life. So, you know, you, you don't, this, that's type of stuff that you hope to do when you're, you're young, you're in your twenties, but to be able to do it, uh, last year and, and have a good time, that's, yeah. That's the best night out I could fucking ask for. You know what I'm saying? And I think the only thing that that didn't happen is uh, you and I. You and I didn't pick up a couple fine honeys, and you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we were talking to some busted up wrestlers afterwards, but uh, that's okay. Think- but, that's, but I had a good time, and I went home happy, and 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 you know, yeah. still to this day, it's a it's a great story, and the little clips I have, and I'm you know, I'm grateful for that opportunity. I'm grateful to to my friend Jody Cohn for setting that opportunity up. But the real highlight of that night, of course, was Floyd Sr. Who uh... and we laughed and we laughed so hard. It was me, you, it was Antonio, it was Apeda, it was Bullet, yeah. Jeff, uh, Jeff, and and we just sat there and we we laughed. And you laughed. actually laughed. I was more terrified because, and we'll show clips over this uh, as people are listening. Floyd Sr. I was la- and you were you were about to have a heart attack. And yeah, because was- because Floyd Sr. was trying to get in the ring because he the, the the it was a two out of three falls match. And after the first fall, he thought the fight was over. So he literally tried to get in the ring to separate these girls from, from fighting. And I'm panicking because I'm like, is a promoter I'm digging like, this or is a promoter hating him. this? Oh my God. I'm like, Floyd, don't let him do that. Come on. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just terrified because I'm like, but it turns out they actually loved it. But yeah, so Floyd was so invested. And I'll tell you what, though, and, and you got to give credit to the girls, Tessa Blanchard. And uh, who was she wrestling? Uh... Um, escapes me, but... Uh, I mean, it, they they were going at it so hard, and we were what you know seven feet away from the ring, mm-hmm. you know, and in and, and we they were row. going in. What's that? We were front row. We were yeah. literally we were on the stage. Yeah, feet. we were five feet from the ring. Yeah, we, and, we, and all we had to do was stand up, and we can touch the the ring apron. But yeah, that was yeah. And you, you know, was, Floyd, literally did. He was trying to get in, but you'd have no idea that I mean, those girls weren't in an MMA match because they were going at it hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, me and the fun thing I love, you know, of course, we're, we're friends with Lady Tapa, who, um, you know, we met to get started with it. And we were yelling at her. I, I love heckling her and, you know, making fun of her Tongan heritage just because as much I love Tonga. But yeah, it was a great time. And and we got some stuff planned in the future. We're going to we're not done with this stuff. No, yet. that was like, listen, uh, like, and I got to give you I like to give you your flowers here on this show, man. I mean, I don't know if you're going to be putting up this entire uh, this entire thing, but um you know for over the years man you've really set up some memorable uh experiences and and fun and there's a lot of times man you know i i i get you get to laugh really hard to where you have to try to cover yourself up man because you're laughing too friggin hard and it hurts and you've provided many of those experiences over the years man so you know i'm i'm grateful for that man i'm grateful for a lot of the fun um uh, a lot of a lot of doors you opened up and a lot of just one-off experiences man you this is well a lot of people um 
you're you're definitely my cup of tea. You may not just like I'm not everybody's cup of tea. You're not everybody's cup of tea, but you're well, we're very similar, I think. Oh, and I know it too, man. But there's not when you you ever come up with an idea, and even if I don't like the idea off the gate, I know it. We're gonna have a fucking good time one way or the other. So you <laughs> listen. If anybody could be around this man right here, and he invites you to one of his cockamamie friggin' concoctions or whatever just i just be open-minded and give it a shot and i guarantee you you there will be an instance if you like to laugh so hard that it hurts and you know there's this said man i couldn't tell you i was probably one of the last i don't know say like i laugh a lot but that i i was laughing hard as shit just at you about to have a fucking panic attack because yeah. Floyd was walking in that ring and I was like, Floyd, don't let this shit happen. Yeah, you're egging it on, and I'm here like, shut up, Frank. And 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 you know, it's just you know, it's just like I said, man. We knew like that was you know, especially with that that outfit, that was most likely going to be our last um, hurrah with them. And if it is, if it isn't, if it was, I, listen, I I think we went out with a fucking bang. I had you you ran that entire fucking show, and your part, whether other people took to it or not i know i had a fucking great time i know Je- i know floyd senior had a fucking great time yeah. um you know well, and, i got kicked in the stomach and thrown on antonio's potato so you got gorilla pressed into the fucking <laughs> crowd i got fucking tossed over a chair um so Your it was good man she gave you a good shove man that was, that was bro it, it was fun and that's why like man any of the any any type of i you know you could always count on me man you could uh, you ever say hey you up for this and I, when do I ever fucking tell you no? I never tell you no because I say when you got something planned, that fucking shit's gonna be fun, man. So yeah. you know, uh, you I, I got to give you that, man. You've always, um, you've always provided a a, a great experience uh, for me. Anytime I had the pleasure of of uh, being outside our our work environment. Yeah, I'd, I'd say the same for you. You know, you've always, you know hit me up and told me, Hey, this is happening. Come by and check this out. Or, or, you know, or I harassed you for like we we're talking about earlier, not tickets necessarily, but for whatever favor, you know, you've been accommodating way more often than not and helped me out a lot in, in this business and definitely, uh, helped me do things. So I've always appreciated that for you. Um, but yeah, man, we've had, we've had some great, yeah, great memories over the years and hopefully there'll be a lot more to come. And as far as this show here, I think we're going to plan. So this, I'm going to put this up on, tuesday so if you're watching this it'll be tuesday um but i think we're gonna go live after this week because i think this will be really fun if we go ahead and and let the the fans join in and they can throw their questions and we'll we'll get to those too at the you know so you don't just hear us two talk and we can have some fun every friday night oh no i'm sorry i said tuesday i meant friday we're gonna yeah, we're here. I'm, I'm down man this is the this is, i mean i don't i never i never turned down um um uh, an experience you you've uh you've executive produced so anytime with this man, I think I think if there's some like live interactions here, man, we can really like open up some stuff. And and, and listen, I don't, you know, it's it's I'm not going to give away social security numbers or anything like that. But you know, I know a few things that people don't know. And I know you know a few things people don't know. And if you catch us at a good time on one of these uh, these live streams, then um, we may give you some good info. So, yeah, we might bring on some. Uh, we might start talking about someone and just bring them on the show at the same time too. You know, just just have random guests pop in. So uh, we'll have fun with it. And uh, yeah, we're not going to be too formal, not too professional with it. Just have some fun and just talk some shit. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, man. I guess we've been on here a while, haven't we? Yeah, good time. We we I think we only plan to do about thirty. So we we've uh, you know, time flies. Oh yeah, because you just got to talk for once. You're just making up for for lost time, right? After all those years of sitting there listening to uh me and whoever talk yeah that's okay man i i, I prefer not to talk that much man it's, it's better to say less but every now and then you need to uh you need this this, is, this could be therapeutic get yeah, some yeah. shit off your chest and you know uh be educated and educate i guess yeah but this is your show so you're gonna have to do it so all right i'm in all right man we'll talk to you guys next friday wouldn't call us the frank stay show what are we calling this thing man I don't know. Would you make up something?